In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the bright sun of justice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the redemption that is at hand. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory to rule heaven and earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
life shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, this is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man was going on a journey, called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Church. Good evening. You can have a seat. Make yourself at home. And welcome to everybody here tonight, and welcome to those who are watching this on our YouTube channel. And um, these last weeks, you know, we're, we've only got one week left in the liturgical year, one Sunday left in the, in the liturgical year. Next week we'll be celebrating the Feast of Christ, the King of the Universe, um, really the, the last Sunday of the year, and then we're going to start into Advent. But these last weeks, as Father Mark mentioned last week, these last weeks of the year are focused on what the Church calls 
the four last things. And just uh, the, if you were here on Tuesday morning, you might have heard part of this homily already. So you got these four last things, and the four last things are, and uh, you know, amongst our favorites, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Okay, so it's not the kind of things we talk about all the time, but the, certainly the kind of things that that we deal with all the time. You know, as a matter of fact, Benjamin Franklin he said, "There's only two certain things in life: death and taxes." And uh, so you know, we're all going to get there, and. Um, and, uh, and so we have, in, in today's reading, we're, we're talking about really the second coming of Jesus, uh, when the, the, the return of the Son of Man. And, um, and probably, though, where most of us aren't going to experience that, we're probably going to pass on ourselves before we get to, you know, Jesus coming back. So if you have reservations for tonight somewhere, they're probably still good. Um, and so we got these four last things, and, and sometimes, you know, there's a lot of fear about death. You know, it, 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 and, um, you know, as a matter of fact, it's the greatest fear in the world is the, the fear of death. And they tell us that all other types of fear are really related to that fear of death. And, you know, none of us is in a hurry. I don't know about you, but I'm not really in a hurry. But, um, but St. Paul, you know, that he, last week he was talking about you know, to somebody who died, and he said, um, we do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. And as a matter of fact, it's one of the favorite scriptures I like to use when I'm doing a funeral, is that when somebody passes of a loved one, it's natural to grieve. But St. Paul tells us we don't need to grieve like somebody without hope. Because the truth is, that's not the end. We believe that's just kind of the passing through from this world into the next. And, uh, and so um, there was something that I, 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 I don't know who's, anybody here have the Halo app on their phone? The Halo app? We're going to plug that again um, soon. Halo is an app, it's a, the number one Catholic app in the world. And it's got all kinds of prayer stuff on it and other kinds of, educational Catholic uh, readings and all kinds of good stuff on there. And a couple weeks ago, it had seven days, uh, a seven-day um, series on near-death experiences. Anybody know, know about near-death experiences? Now, near-death experiences aren't like, wow, I almost got killed by that car. Near-death experiences is when somebody had, some event happened and they were clinically dead. You know, they were undergoing surgery and their heart stopped, or they got in a car accident and they were, you know, clinically dead, their heart stopped, maybe their brain waves even did. Um, and um, that, but in many of these cases, when these people, they, they do come back, some of these people come back, and they describe uh, their experience in two different ways. Either they went to a place of light, or they went to a place of darkness. And I think uh, in, in following that for that week, I, I was really a sign of hope for me. It's not like proof, definitive proof that there's heaven and hell, but it, it certainly correlates with what we believe as Catholics and Christians. And so in these cases of uh, where they've gone to the light, there was one case where there was a, a child, and this child actually drowned. Um, it was a little girl, and she drowned, and she had gone for 18 minutes without oxygen. He wasn't breathing for 18 minutes. Usually that's really bad. Usually you're going to be dead or you're going to have brain, severe brain damage. But anyway, she, she kind of woke up a few days and they took her to the hospital and they put her into an induced coma to reduce any swelling in the brain. And, um, but she woke up like a couple days later and she described what happened to her. First she described what the doctor looked like who was taking care of her. And she never saw this doctor, but she described him perfectly. He had a beard and all this. And then she said, while she was, you know, uh, in that state, she kind of rose up from her body. Her spirit left her body. And she went home with her family in the car. And she described what her little brother was doing in the back seat, playing this game. So uh, she had these experiences. 
So, and then she described that she, she was taken to this place of light. And in that place of light, she met some relatives that she had never met before, and she met Jesus. And during that encounter with Jesus, you know, it was a place of peace, a place of joy, a place of hope. In that, when she was with Jesus, Jesus said, do you want to go back to your mom? She said, yeah, I want to go back. And so she went back, and she was okay. Uh, and, and so we have these stories where people speak of things that they really don't have any, there's, there's no way they could know them. There was one case where a, a, a man, he, he died on, this, on the operating table, and his spirit left his body, and he was kind of hovering over his body, and they were working on him and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and he even left the, the hospital. And he was looking down in the hospital from the outside. And he looked down, and there on a ledge of the hospital that you couldn't see from the ground and you couldn't see from the windows of the hospital, there was an old sneaker on the ledge. And so, you know, when he came back in the next day or so, he, he actually came back, uh, you know, into his, into his body and, uh, you know, was resuscitated and, and came back. He described that sneaker that was out on the ledge. And one of the nurses said, I got to see this. She climbs out onto the ledge and gets that sneaker, and it looked exactly the way that this guy described it. And so, um, and there was one common thing about these people who, who um, had these near-death experiences and went to the light, is that they never feared dying again. They never feared death, because they saw heaven as this place of peace, and love and joy. But there was one guy who was, uh, he was an atheist, a professed atheist, and uh, he was uh, not a really nice person either. And, uh, and he got sick and he died. And he describes going to a place of darkness where he was tormented by demons. And in the midst of that, he said, Jesus, save me! An atheist, right? Jesus saved me. And all of a sudden, some angels showed up, and they, they, they went to this man, and they took him to the place of light. And so there's thousands of these stories, and there have been a lot of studies on these kind of things, but you have these two kind of... And, and what that does is it doesn't give us proof of heaven and hell, but it correlates with what the Gospels tell us about heaven. You know, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in me, have faith also in God. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. And I'm going to go prepare a place for you, so that where I am, you also might be. And so we can have hope, even in the midst of, of, uh, of death, of judgment, we can have hope. And the reason we can have hope is because, for most of us, we've been baptized. We've been born again in the waters of baptism. Now, that ain't the same as getting our ticket punched. We still have to live our life in the light. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, at least we've been enlightened by Christ in the waters of baptism. And we have an eternal home in heaven if we hold tight to Jesus. In this uh, letter we have, and so it's important for us to... Uh, to be ready. You know, last week, Father was talking about be ready, be awake. And it tells us the same thing. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. Well, what I liked about what St. Paul said really correlates with, with our own experience of baptism. And this is the way we need to live our life, prepare ourselves to be ready. It says, but you, brothers and sisters, are not in the darkness. The world's filled with a lot of darkness, isn't it? You, my brothers and sisters, are not in the darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. And so that just confirms what we hear at baptism. At baptism, we, uh, we light a candle, and we present that candle and said, receive the light of Christ. Keep this light burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. May they always live as a child of the light. And 
So St. Paul is telling us to take up our baptismal uh, role, our baptismal uh, relationship with God, that we are children of the light and to live as light. And so that's what our charge is, especially as we finish up this liturgical year, especially as we enter into Adv Advent, because the, the message is kind of still the same. It's about the second coming of Jesus, who's going to come to judge the living and the dead. But we can be prepared by being children of the light. We have opportunities here at St. Paul where we can do that. The last few weeks we've been collecting food, some of which has been distributed already. Some of it's going to be distributed at St. Joe's this weekend in Rockdale for people who are in need. We're sending our light out to various places. We've got some giving trees in the back, um, which has items for families that are in need. And, and I think there's a coat box, too, for, for uh, let's say, coats and jackets that are in good shape. If, you, if you're done using them, put them in the box, and they'll go to somebody who needs them. So we can be the children of the light in so many ways, with our finances, but also with the people we meet. We should, we should really be a people that, that, that shine forth. You know, when we go into a place, people should be able to say, wow, you must be a child of the light. You know, that's the way we're supposed to look. We're supposed to be able to change the environment around us. You know, I believe that if we were to do that in this, this town of Joliet, that we could transform the town. You know, we're in this restructuring process. Some churches are going to be closed, and who knows what else. But it doesn't really matter. If we keep doing church the way we're doing it, we're just going to continue to decline. It's only when we activate, when we go into mission as the children of the light, can we turn that trend and begin to see these pews fill up and people come to, to know Jesus and to encounter Christ in a brand new way and to make a difference in the world. And, and bring light into the darkness. Amen? Amen. One God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, Proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, we offer prayers for the church and the world. For the church that it be an instrument of hope for all in the world, we pray to the Lord. <coughs> Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the needy, that they will receive what they need, especially during this Thanksgiving season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for family and friends and for reconciliation for those who are estranged, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parish community of St. Paul the Apostle, that we will use our gifts for the advancement of the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who are sick, who are sick uh, especially Anne Marie Russell and Twyla Sokolowitz, that their hearts might be filled with peace and hope in God's healing mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, 
especially Dan, Daniel Caro, that they may share the Lord's victory over death and live forever in the peace of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on our parish prayer list, for the intentions written in our book of prayers and the book of the dead, and for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of this Mass, Marvin Skidmore and Marilyn Lonzo, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the living, you are faithful to your covenant. Hear the prayers of your servants and grant what we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 508, Center of My Life. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. <laughs> we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <clears throat>
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, Daniel, our retired bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 439, You Are Near. I 
We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we have a few announcements tonight. The, uh, the, we have a something special. We've got a Thanksgiving Mass on Thanksgiving Day, obviously, at 9 a.m. We're doing something special this year. Um, we're going to have a Thanksgiving bread swap. And so um, you're going to, if you want to participate in this, you bring a loaf of bread, hopefully a good loaf, um, either homemade or, or store-bought. Um, and uh, you bring that, and you're going to place it on a table. But when you leave, you're going to take another bread from somebody else. And so Father has seen this at previous parishes and, and kind of thought it was kind of a neat idea. So we're going to try that out on Thanksgiving which is always really a special Mass. Um, you know, it's not a, a holy day of obligation or anything, but uh, the people who are here really want to express their thanksgiving for all that God has done for us. So that's always a special day. The uh, Giving Tree program, we have a couple of Christmas trees back there that have little tags on them with items that you're going to buy and bring. Um, those are for really people in need. And... Uh, and so I encourage you to participate in that um, as well. And uh, there's a box back there for jackets or coats, as I mentioned. And uh, the diocese is celebrating its 75th anniversary next year, but we're kind of into the new year uh, in two weeks. At the first Sunday of Advent, we enter into the new, new year. And so the diocese is celebrating their 75th anniversary. Um, and uh, there's going to be a podcast episode launch featuring Bishop Hicks and Father Tom Paul, who's the chairperson of the 75th Anniversary Committee. Uh, you can probably, that's probably in the bulletin. Also in November is the nine-day Novena of Grace, beginning November 25th, culminating with a dedication of the St. Francis Xavier statue at the Blanchette uh, Catholic Center on December 3rd. Um, St. Francis Xavier is the patron saint of our diocese. So see the bulletin for more details. Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, please join in singing number 533, Let There Be Peace on Earth.